Hi and welcome back to MS Projects 2013 tutorial. In video 3 we're going to cover the following. Gantt chart view. We'll discuss the content of the Gantt chart, the task entry table and the actual Gantt chart view itself. Creating a task list. Inserting tasks into a task column. Task explanation. Here I'll go in and discuss with you what a task is and then manual and auto scheduling of tasks. Now we'll look at the Gantt chart view. After you choose a method for creating a new project, the file will open. The view is the largest area on the Project 2013 interface. Project 2013 comes in over two dozen different views. Each view shows you a different aspect of your project. You can even create your own view if you wish. We'll look at this later. The Gantt chart is the default view. In Microsoft Projects 2013, whenever you first open up a blank project, this is the view that you will see. Gantt charts are the most common method of displaying project information. Looking at the Gantt chart on the left hand side, that is known as your entry table. It looks like a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. In the left pane of the Gantt chart view, you'll see the following project information in columns from left to right row number which is simply the row in the Gantt chart. Next you have the indicator which are little pictures that show the status of the task. For example if a task contains a note this column will show you a note indicator. Task mode this shows you whether the task is in manual or auto schedule mode. We will discuss this later. Task name which is a brief description of the work, in other words the task. Short action orientated task names are the best, for example design logo, poor foundations, dependent on what type of task you're doing you would name it accordingly. Duration, which is how long the task will take by default. Microsoft Project 2013 uses days as the unit of time for the duration. However, if you wish you can specify minutes, hours, weeks or months as the units of time. Start which is the date on which this task will start. By default Microsoft Project Professional 2013 makes the start date of the new task the same as the start date of the project. However, you can easily choose new start dates from the task by selecting the down arrow in the cell. On the right hand side of the screen you will see your Gantt chart view. This is a pictorial view of your tasks. Here it will show you the duration of each task plotted as a bar against the date along the top of the pane. You'll notice that there's a vertical separator between the entry table and the Gantt chart view. This can be moved to show more columns within the entry table. As you saw as I moved the bar to the right hand side it opened up additional columns. These are resource name and add new column. We'll cover these later on in the tutorial. Once you have a blank project file, you must fill in the information about the project itself. What we're going to do now is we're going to fill in the tasks. This is the first set of crucial project data that we will enter. Then we'll have a look at resources as the second and we'll carry on from there. We are now going to set up the project. I will take you through the step by step. The project that we're going to be using here is based on a construction project. Before you start, you must make sure that you have all the task information on hand. As you can see, I've set up an Excel spreadsheet. Column B contains all the tasks. Before we start entering, let's have a look at what a task is. A task is a chunk of work that has to be done in sequence to allow the project to complete in time. In other words, tasks are the building blocks of effort that need to be done to execute the project. In Project 2013, we use tasks to break up the project into more manageable work. We can then schedule the work, add resources to the task to complete the task. The resources are people, material, machinery and money that are needed to complete the task. Before we start entering the tasks in, there's a further thing that I need to discuss. And that is the difference between manual, schedule and auto schedule. As you'll remember, in the beginning of the tutorial I mentioned that there's a button on the status bar at the bottom which allows you to select. As you can see there it says new tasks will be auto scheduled, task dates are calculated by Microsoft Projects or manual scheduled task dates are not automatically updated. When we are in manual scheduled 
you control the task start end date and duration this is by default in Microsoft Project 2013 it's fine when you're going to be setting up new or simple projects auto schedule Microsoft Project 2013 controls the task start date and end date and the duration this is best for more mature and complex projects one of the advantages of using manual schedule is that I can put a textual entry into the duration box here's an example of what I mean by entering uh, text into the duration box let's say for instance I need to insert a duration into the duration box but I don't know what that duration is and I will need to ask one of the other project managers or people at the next meeting so what I will do is I'll click on the duration box as you can see at the top the manual schedule button is showing it is illuminated what I do now is I type in my text ask Peter at next meeting so there you go I now have a textual entry so I'm not forced to put in a date because I don't know okay I've completed um, entering the text into the duration the next thing I want to show you is how to use auto schedule mode or what happens in auto schedule mode I now push enter on my keyboard to schedule move down to my next row row 2 now before I start typing the task information in I need to change over to auto schedule mode to do that I go down to the taskbar at the bottom click on the button select auto schedule and as this is this moment it would seem that nothing has happened but in fact I've switched the auto scheduling on the next time I do a task entry it will automatically set up the task duration as you notice at the bottom it now says new task auto scheduled I'm going to go in and click on the task name and I will now enter the task information or the task name as I push enter notice a number of things have happened firstly the task mode has changed from manual to auto notice what the auto schedule button looks like under the duration by default these projects will automatically add a single day as your duration this we can go back in and change as we need I will come back to that in a few minutes notice on the right hand side the first column the start column now shows a start date which corresponds to today's date the reason being is I have not set up a actual project date as yet we are still in the planning mode and it also shows the finish day as today because of the one day duration so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and or click on day one and I'm going to in increase it to 10 days notice I'm not entering days it will automatically happen when I push enter I push enter okay notice what's happened two things firstly the duration has changed by 10 days so our start date will still be the 9th of the 3rd 2015 but look at our end date that has now changed to the 20th of the 3rd 2015 if I move to the right hand side to the Gantt chart view notice how the Gantt chart is extended to show you the pictorial view of what is happening with the project that bar corresponds with your timeline as you will see we're now going to start adding the task to the project plan to enter the task we click into the task name box and we start typing in the name of the tasks and as you can see I started in row 1 automatically as I push enter on the left hand side in your numbering column it comes up with a number to correspond to the row that we are in you'll notice um, that I'm not putting any durations in at this stage I'm purely capturing the task to make sure that the tasks are all there that we haven't forgotten anything out from our plan right um, stop the video 
and I want you to open up a blank project in front of you and start capturing the project names into the task column. Right, we've come to the end of this video. Thanks for your time. Hope to see you in the next one. See you in a bit.